Luke chapter 12 this morning. This is a familiar passage of Scripture and a familiar story. We we'll begin reading in verse 16. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man hath brought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. And he said, This will I do. I will pull down my barns and, I, and build greater. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then whose shall, all, shall those things be which thou hast provided? I want to talk to you about don't make foolish mistakes this morning. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the Word of God. And Father, we thank you today that you will bless your Word. And Lord, that you will have us to have the words you'd have us to say and Lord the message would be yours and you'd take it and walk and use it amongst those that are here today bless all that's done we ask now in Jesus name amen you know you talk about foolish mistakes I just told you about one that was made there was another one made too I'm in the hospital and this little nurse comes in and Gus had been there all morning she had to go home and Gus went home and the little nurse come in, she looked at me, she said, did your wife go home? Yep. I went, no, that's my daughter. And she said, oh, well, I thought for an old guy, you sure had it going on with a hot, good-looking <laughs> wife like that. <laughs> so see, you can make some pretty foolish mistakes if you're not really careful <laughs> with what you're doing. Uh, but this man made some <laughs> foolish mistakes that weren't fixable. You know, in life we can make some mistakes and we can go around and correct those mistakes. But this man made some mistakes and didn't correct them and waited till it was too late. And I want to look at him this morning and we can look in our lives today and say, don't make those same kind of mistakes. Of course, we know the story. This man was wealthy. He evidently was a wise man and had some education. He had a good uh, business and he had much money and much goods and he he thought he had it made but some mistakes he made in his life we need to be careful not to make and the first one that this man made is he mistook his way for wisdom he said this he thought within himself what's the problem with thinking about our wisdom the Bible says there's the way that seemeth right unto man but the end thereof is the ways of death uh, our wisdom is foolishness. Never think that the world's wisdom and our wisdom is the right wisdom because we know the world's wisdom and our wisdom changes all the time and is relevant to what we know and understand. And a lot of times we don't understand or know very much at all when we really get down to it. And so when he thought, he said, man, what am I going to do? And you know, that's where our world is today. The world is thinking and trying to understand, and they're looking around saying, man, what are we going to do? The world's in such a shape, and, the, and our finances and our economy and, and everything is such in a, a horrible shape. What are we going to do? Notice what he said. I'll fix it. He said, I'll build. You know, that's what the world says today. We know what to do. We'll fix it. We'll have more education. We'll have more government. We'll have this or we'll have that. Notice what he thought and what he was going to do was not going to fix the problem. Today, when the world follows its wisdom and we want to follow our wisdom, it's not going to fix spiritual problems. That was what the man didn't understand. He needed to fix his spiritual problem and he didn't do that then he also made another mistake he mistook his goods for God's grace you know and people will look around and say boy you know God's really must be blessing that person they've got all of these things 
And because they have those things, and we don't just have to talk about individuals. People will look at churches say, boy, this church must be really God's church and really be blessed. Look at the size of their building and the size of their congregation and the amount of their offerings. It must be really, really something of God. Let me tell you something. Just as this was not a measure of God's grace on this man's life, Neither is that a measure of God's grace on the church either. It's the spirituality inside that church and what's going on in it is the measure of God's grace. He said, man, look at my goods. You know, that's the problem with the world today is what I call eye disease. I can do and I have and I will and I want. And that's what he said, my goods and my fruits and my barns, my soul. And you know, that's the cry of the world today. It's my soul, it's my life, and this is all mine, and I can do what I want to with it. Better go read Proverbs. Proverbs says it's all God. It said God gives and God can take away. Just as fast as you got it, and this man's fixing to learn that lesson real quick. He said, boy, I've just got it made in God's grace and that it must be really wonderful and I'm okay because I have all this stuff. I'm here to tell you when time comes for eternity, stuff means nothing. And if you've ever been close to death or been told you about to die, you'll figure that out real quick. And I've been there a time or two and I can tell you beyond a shadow of a doubt when you're at that spot, the money in the bank don't mean nothing. The cars in the driveway mean absolutely nothing. The house you own means nothing. Everything about your soul comes into play at that time. Not only did he mistake his way for wisdom, not only did he mistake his goods for God's grace, he mistook his loot for his longevity. That <laughs> sounds kind of funny, but it Kind of rhymed good. Started with L, both of them, you notice that. He thought, man, I got enough money, I'll just make it forever. He said, man, I've got plenty, what he say, to last me for many years. He said, I got enough money, I'm going to make it. And you realize that's what the world thinks today? They think they have the ability, the strength, and the money to buy life. My Bible says it's appointed unto man once to die. And after this the judgment. When God's calendar comes up and your mark is on that day and that hour of that calendar. I'm here to tell you. No amount of money. No matter how strong you are. Or anything else. Is going to keep you from that appointment. I've seen a fellow, I've told you the story before, when my father-in-law was in the hospital, a man that had run into a, thou a couple of hundred thousand volts of electricity with a, with a uh, backhoe, it literally fried his face off. He had no lips, no eyes, no ears, uh, no eyes, he had eyes, no eyebrows, no eyelids, no lips, no fingers, no toes, and he was just burnt and scarred from head to toe but he was living and healthy otherwise and you could hear him screaming in the hospital I, I saw as I stand outside my father-in-law's room the security guard come by and that man begging him to take his gun out and kill him because he didn't want to live if anybody should have died he should have why didn't he wasn't God's time for him to die Likewise, I know a preacher that had a sinus infection and it killed him in about three days. I've known of people that had splinters in their finger that it killed them too. You say, from a splinter, a silly sinus infection? Let me tell you, when God's mark is on your calendar, on his calendar, he'll use anything. Simplest thing to the worst thing makes no difference. It's going to happen going to happen my wife's boss as far as we knew he was healthy he had been two weeks before to the doctor and they gave him a clean bill of health said he was doing great 
He got up that morning, made a cup of coffee, and went into eternity. Never expecting it. You never know. Don't mistake what you have and the health you have and the goods you have as being, well, I'm okay. I can remember a time when I never went to the doctor either. <laughs> Stick around long enough, you're going to be there. This fellow thought he was going to live forever. You know, I wish I had all the money the world has spent trying to live forever. Guess what? You're wasting your money. You're going to live forever. You're wasting your money. You're going to live forever. You're going to live forever in one of two places. You're going to live forever in hell. You're going to live forever in heaven. So, don't mistake it. you got longevity. God said in the beginning, he said, let us make man in our image. God's an eternal being, so guess what? So are you. You will live somewhere forever. Then the second mate, mistake, or third, fourth mistake, I can't even count this morning. Fourth mistake he made. He mistook his bank book for his Bible. How many people leave God out, never have anything to do with the Lord, because of money. I've got to make money. I've got to have money. Don't have time for the Lord. He said, man, take thine ease. He said, I don't need God. I got plenty of money. I don't need God. I got a good house. I don't need God. I'm healthy. And go down the list. How do you know? He said, man, I can eat, drink, and be merry. I can just have a good old time. That's what the world's attitude is today. I, we got plenty of stuff. I can just have a good old time. I'm fine. Well, if that's your attitude, may I say unto you, you better enjoy every second of it because that's all the happiness and the joy you will ever have for the rest of eternity. The world looks at us as Christians and they say, well, you see, we're out having a good time we're enjoying ourselves today and they're out doing whatever they're doing and here you are to listen to me holler and yell and preach at you. Well, they may be having a good time. I'm having a good time. I don't know about you, but I'm having a good time right where I am. And by the way, I'll remember it in the morning too. <laughs> <clears throat> I couldn't pass that one up. But you understand the minute this man's life ended and their life ended without God my Bible says they're in a place of eternal torment forever the Bible tells us Jesus said it Paul said it many of the other writers in the scripture said it we may have to suffer a little while here but then he said compared to Christ's suffering we're not suffering at all and when we get to heaven there'll be no more suffering brother Corley what a what a pillar of the faith he is and been a member of this church almost as long as it's been in existence. That was his cry. He said, I don't want to suffer anymore. He said, I know where I'm going and I'm not going to be suffering. He said, I'm ready to go. I don't want to suffer like this anymore. I'm glad we're not going to suffer. There won't be any more blood pressure yo-yos in heaven. There'll be no more missing legs in heaven. There'll be no more cancer, no more lung disease. We'll never suffer again in any form or fashion. Then the fifth mistake he made. He mistook his body for his soul. Notice what he said. He said, I'll say to my soul, hmm, you ever tried to speak to your soul? How do you speak to your soul when you don't even know where it is? Or how to speak to it? I only know of one thing that will speak to your soul. And that's God and the Word of God. When you're speaking, I'm sure he's thought I'll speak to my heart. Heart's your emotions, not your soul. And if you read this story and understand what he's done, he's just, that's exactly what he's done. He spoke to his emotions. How do you know? 
Why, he wanted to have a good time, and he was going to make himself feel good by eating and drinking and being merry. He wasn't speaking to his soul. He was speaking to his flesh. And the world would like us, and the devil would like us to think that when we feel that way, and we make all of those commitments, and we make all those promises to ourselves, that we're doing that to our soul. We're not. We're making it to the flesh. We're just simply speaking to the old flesh and trying to appease the flesh. The flesh is what we battle, and the flesh is what we have to fight from day to day. That's what keeps us in sin all our life. That's why we'll never be free from sin. That's why this body will never go to heaven. Because sin's in the flesh. And the flesh likes sin. And the flesh wants to be satisfied. And that's why sin is so easy to get in and get hooked and be addicted to. Because it's the natural thing for the body to do and the body likes it. He said, I will say to my soul... Notice, we see that it's a fleshly desire. How do you know? Because when you f speak to the soul, and God speaks to the soul and satisfies the soul, it's satisfied forever. Notice he was not satisfied with how much food he had. He wasn't satisfied with what he had to drink. He wasn't satisfied with all those things he had. He wanted more. When you speak to the flesh, the flesh always wants more. Let me ask you if you've ever said this to your husband or wife. I know I have. My wife, I don't think, she's ever said it to me. I think it's a guy thing, especially when we want something. If you'll just let me buy this car, I'll be satisfied. I won't want another one. Just let me get whatever this is, and I promise that'll satisfy me, and I won't want another one. How long does that last? Not very long. For me, anyway. <laughs> I don't know about you. And I always get, yeah, right, I've heard that before. I wonder how many times God's heard that and said, yeah, I've heard that before. Well, you know, he said, if I do this, I'll be happy. And that's the way sin always is. Sin will always take you far from further than you'll ever want to go and cost you more than you ever want to pay be sure your sin will find you out this morning if you're going to speak to your soul God's got to speak to your soul if you're here this morning you're lost I, hear, I guarantee you unless your heart's so hard as a brick God's knocking on it and speaking saying you know this morning you need a savior you're the one this morning that needs God. You're just like this man. That was the man's problem. He had satisfied and done everything he could except put God in his life. And when you mistake your body for your soul, that's what happens. You put everything in it except the right thing. Today, those of us who are Christians, sometimes we begin to let the flesh overrule. The Bible says we're to walk in the Spirit, not in the flesh. Because when we walk in the flesh, we're doing the same thing this man done, except we're just not leaving God out of our life. We're not letting God rule our life. I say this all the time. You understand that we as Christians are in a battle, and Paul talks about it over and over in the Scripture. And I am the deciding factor who wins the battle that day. You have good on one side, and you have evil on the other. You have the devil on one side, the Lord on the other, however you want to put it. And the Bible says that we're at war. If you want to put it in a third way, you have the flesh and the soul. It's all the same thing. We're in a battle. Paul said, I find a war in my members. You understand that it's a stalemate. It's a tie. You decide which side you're on. And if that day you decide to let your flesh, the devil, or evil rule, guess who wins that day? That one. We should always be striving to keep ourselves on the side of the Lord so the Lord will always win in our life. 
Don't mistake your body for your soul. Oh, here's a good one. Last this morning, he mistook his time for eternity. He said, I've got all the time in the world. Well, wonder how many people today will step out into eternity thinking, I got all the time in the world. Death is no respecter of persons. You talk to anybody that's been in the ministry very long. I've done funerals for two years old just as well as I have 103 year olds. You have no promise. We're in the book of James on Wednesday night. The book of James tells you you have no promise of tomorrow. Your life is but a vapor. It's here today and gone tomorrow. Young people, I know, I've been there. I was young one time, many moons and moons and moons and moons and moons ago. I understand I'm older than dirt. But, <laughs> well, some of you are older dirt than me. But some, to young people, us older folks, are, you know, we're older than dirt. I guarantee you it seems like it was yesterday I wasn't older than dirt. It's gone. And I look back and I can't believe my kids were old as, are, are old as they are. I got grandkids that seem like I ought to be their age the day before yesterday. Life fleets away so fast. Talking to Brother Corley, Miss Corley up there. Brother Corley's fixing to be, if he if he made his next birthday, would have been 90 years old. They were talking about how how short life had seemed. Many years. Well, let me explain many years to you. Come, yes, we look and you look at Brother Corley's life and you say, yes. He had a long life, 90 years. Do you understand 90 years compared to eternity is absolutely nothing at all. We really have, because of our God making time for us, and we have a time that we start life and a time we end life, we really do not have the ability, the mind, or the concept of what eternity is. We just cannot we say the words and we understand the meanings, but it really, if you think in your heart and your mind, you really can't fathom forever. Let me tell you, forever is a long time. Forever means no end. And if you're lost this morning, then you'll spend forever in hell. But thank God if you'll accept Christ, you'll spend forever in heaven. Those of us who know the Lord, will have forever in heaven. The thing he misunderstood, that he didn't have all the time in the world. That's what he thought, but what did God say? This night, thou fool, thy soul shall be required of thee. And then comes the reality. He said, then whose will all these things be? Told you before. When my time's here, it's gone, and I'm gone. My wife and my kids and her new boyfriend can have all my bills. They'll inherit every one of them. And guess what? Yours will too. People all the time bury stuff in their caskets, be buried in cars, and all that stuff, they're going to take it with them. That's what the Pharaohs thought. They'd take all that stuff with them, let me tell you. The only thing you take out of this world with you is your soul. And that's it. Nothing else. What if this was your time? Don't make the foolish mistakes this man made. Be sure that you know God and God's in your life. That's the number one thing that you need to do in life. I always say this at funerals, but it's a good time to say it now. That's the greatest thing you can do for your family when it's your time and God takes you from this world is that they know beyond a shadow of a doubt where you are. My wife's boss is, I'm sorry, but he's a good example right now. He was the greatest man you'd ever want to know good as gold.
But you know what the sad thing is? We don't know where he is for sure. We don't know. My wife the other night was talking about, you know, she said, I lost my dad, didn't hurt me this bad. Lost your dad, didn't hurt me this bad. She said, I don't know why it hurts me this bad. I said, because we don't know where he is. That's why. Make sure you know. Number two, live a life and make sure your family knows. Make sure. Christian, make sure your family knows. You know, you can claim all you want. It's the proofs in the pudding. Don't make them wonder. Don't make those foolish mistakes. Let's bow our heads in prayer.